Hey everyone, C-Stan here with the Lord of the Rings, the Living Card Game. Today I am here to make good on my promise to give an attempt at Nightmare Escape from Dol Guldur. If you saw my last video, it's basically a rundown of the quest mechanics, what's changed in the Nightmare version, and uh, what the difficult uh, aspects of it are. Um, I can actually show you here what my deck is like. So this is the deck I built. It's got a lot of different cards to tech for different aspects of the quest. So you'll notice it's actually well over 50 cards because it seems like almost every card in the encounter deck needs a card um, in my deck to counter it. So I, I had a real tough time trimming down to 50. Normally I don't have a problem, but the quest is long and difficult and um, each card presents a different challenge. Um, so there's a lot in here um, that's actually needed. Okay, uh, so I'll load up the quest and just a fair warning, I'm gonna be extremely liberal with my, the re my reset button. So if I do not get a setup I like, I'm going to reset it um, because it's not worth, you know, playing for 20 hours just to get you guys a complete run through. Um, okay, so I plan to reset whenever Glorfindel is not the hero. Um, so uh, I'm just going to go ahead and choose him essentially as the as the captive. Um, so you can, I guess, multiply my number of attempts by three if you want to keep track. And so I'm going to actually reveal the encounter cards before revealing the, before loading up my deck and taking a mulligan, just because I'm going to be resetting the staging area so often. So here we have one, we got two, we got three cards, and I actually like that setup a lot. Uh, so I'm going to load in a deck here. Um, okay, I'm going to flip that over. I, I really want to get Path of Need in my starting hand, but I do have Heed the Dream. Um, no, I'm going to take the Mulligan. Okay, I didn't get it. I start with two resources here and start the first turn. And I do have to, oh, sorry, I have to do the Surge and the Doomed One from this card. And uh, this doesn't really affect the start. Uh, it's just a phase-long effect, so I don't have to worry about that. But I do have to start with one extra threat. Okay. Um, so actually, I'm, I'm not off to a terrible start here. I think that given a Gandalf showing up, I'll be able to grab a, um, yeah, I'll be able to grab the Path of Need with a combo here. So I guess for the first turn, I'll just commit Denethor to the quest, leave Berevor up and uh, reveal. Okay, I got Hummerhorns. I quested for one. There's three in the staging area. A threat goes up two. And that means that this dungeon jailer is going to hide one of our items. So we're going to lose the keys here. Because we failed the quest and he confiscates one of our objectives. But we'll engage him so he doesn't do it again after traveling. And deal him a shadow, take it undefended. Okay, if this enemy is not defeated this phase, raise the defending player's threat by seven at the end of the phase. Okay, I'm not going to defeat him. I'm going to take the two damage, draw two cards. Okay, we didn't get Gandalf. We really need Gandalf. Um, and raise our threat by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Start a new turn.
Okay. Now, what to do here? I could heed the dream to try and find it. Yeah, let's do that. Spend one. Look at the top five cards here. See if we get lucky. No, not even Gandalf. Um, hmm. If I grab the sneak attack, I can play a couple Gandalfs, though. So I'll grab sneak. And then spend three. Four. Um, hmm. I guess I'll go ahead and try to grab Path of Need. Yeah, here it is. It was the sixth card down, unfortunately. Okay. Um, hmm. Let's also play down an Amphilas Herdsman to chump block this enemy here. And we'll commit one to the quest. We reveal Dungeon Labyrinth. And that means uh, there's two threat here. Our threat goes up by one. Set reminder. For combat, I'm going to lose my herdsman. Uh, discard each card you control that has a copy of itself in your discard pile. Well, I don't have any copies of him, so he just dies. And Berevoort draws a couple cards. Um, did I? F I shuffled my deck. Good. Okay. So we draw. We draw. That doesn't really help us. Refresh. And this gets a token. New round. Okay. Well, this is good. We have Wealth of Gondor for one. Captain's Wisdom for two. That means we can play down Path of Need here. For four. And I'm thinking of getting the steward out. Uh, next turn. Hmm. I really cannot afford to hit 40 threat. So I'm just thinking maybe I should play Hanamarth and start questing with him. Okay, let's commit 1, 2, not exhausting, 3 to the quest. We reveal Torture Chamber. Yikes. Um, so that's going to bring our threat up. Uh, we're going to be at... There's three here, so threat goes up three. Yikes. We're really close to having to engage the Hummerhorns. Jailer gets to attack Berevor, who does not exhaust to defend. Okay, it says I have to exhaust a character control. So unfortunately, I don't get to draw with Berevor, which really hurts our prospects of getting Gandalf out. Refresh, we get a token here, and then a token on each Dol Guldur location in play. Sorry, one here, and then one, one. Start a new round. Aha, we got Gandalf. Excellent. So we can use him in the quest phase to sneak attack, kill the Hummerhorns, and help, help quest with us. So let me get down Errand Rider for one. And. Right. Um, yeah, it's going to be a while until I get my steward out now. Uh, maybe not. I can Errand Rider back a, a thing here. Okay, so quest phase, we will sneak attack in Gandalf. And do I want to lower my threat by five? or kill the Hummerhorns. I think I'll kill the Hummerhorns. So 
they're dead, we commit four. Oh, shoot. Do I want to play Mariner's Compass instead? I think I do. Instead of the Errand Rider. Yeah. Okay, so instead of the Errand Rider, I'm going to play the Compass down on Denethor. So we can get rid of these things that are piling up here. We're committing four, five, six, seven to the quest. We reveal doomed one. There's going to be four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I thought it goes up two. This engages us. And I'm going to have Denethor might as well defend. Oh, no. Before engagement, Denethor is going to exhaust with the compass to try to get rid of the dungeon labyrinth. Uh, okay, so one, two, three, four, five. Okay, this is really bad. We did not find a location. Yikes, okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, um, so we engage both. Deal out the shadows. Barovor defends both. Nothing and plus nine attack. That ends the game. Okay, so you saw what uh, what a bad attempt looks like. Now I think I'm just going to edit out the video until I get a successful attempt. Uh, since you've had sort of the preamble now. Um, so I'm just going to cut to my successful attempt. Okay, and we're back. After many failed attempts, I finally managed to find a successful one. But I had gotten tired of recording my voice for each attempt. So I, I had played this initially without talking, um, so it goes by a little quickly. Um, but I'm going to do my best with an audio commentary to explain what's going on. To start, we reveal the setup cards, even though technically you are supposed to load your deck first. Uh, I already know I'm going to, to um, base my mulligan decision around getting Path of Need in my opening hand. So it was a bit faster for me to keep cycling through setups um, before loading my deck. So there you see I took a mulligan because I didn't have Path of Need. Um, where again, we're choosing Glorfindel to be the captive. Um, not really choosing, but basically just giving up whenever uh, he is not the captive. So we always choose him as the effect for things like the, um, the King Spider who has a when revealed effect where you must exhaust a character. So I know I'm not going to I'm I know I'm going to have Glorfindel as my captive, so you might as well just choose Glorfindel to be the exhausted character. We also got um a treachery that whiffed um it it didn't really do anything first turn Sentinel of Shadow. Um it just adds some threat to the staging area for the phase. Uh, we can ignore that. We also got the Spider of Dol Guldur, which surged uh, into the King Spider because there were unclaimed objectives in play. And so that's the setup. We put Steward on Barivor, exhaust it, and also play down an Errand Rider. Now, unfortunately, on the first turn, I well, I quest for zero and reveal Dark Interrogation. And Dark inter Interrogation has a one revealed effect where you have to discard down to two cards. So that really hurts early in the game, um, the time when you need your cards the most. But thankfully, I had gotten out my Steward and my Errand Rider, so I'm well set for resource management, and I can, I can handle the loss of cards. I decide to make the Labyrinth the active location. Uh, it's a good target generally for Path of Need because it's got such a big amount of quest points necessary to complete it that uh, you can you can set it as active without really worrying about over questing and completing the, the uh, location. 
So we engage both enemies, defend with Denethor and Barivor against two, three attack enemies. Uh, luckily, we didn't have any bad shadow effects, so we just take the one damage on Barivor um, and start the next round. I drew into a Heed the Dream, which is really nice because uh, I desperately need the card draw at this point. I've got two, two, two cards left in my hand, but it doesn't really turn up anything good in the top five. Um, but at least I get to shuffle that away. I will play down my one ally for the turn as an Anthelas Herdsman. And basically, I'm going to need to keep surviving some attacks from these spiders. Uh, if I am going to, to last until I get the Path of Need. That's really what it's all about. Getting that Path of Need in play. Now, one thought I have right now is that I have enough to play Gandalf. And so I could play him and kill the spider with his direct damage attack. And that will help me avoid... Of course, you can only play one ally per turn. So um, I've got to pick... I've got to pick Gandalf instead of the Anthless Herdsman. Gandalf will nuke the spider. And that's really... Be that's really just so that um, I have one less shadow effect to be worried about. So Necromancer's Reach just damages Gandalf. Denethor defends the spider, takes no damage. Barivor draws two cards. And... That's pretty much the turn. We ready our cards. We add another token to Dungeon Labyrinth. Every time Dungeon Labyrinth gets a token, it gains plus one threat and plus one quest point. So over time, it actually gets harder and harder to explore. In the refresh phase, we exhaust Steward of Gondor, get two resources on Barivor, and use Word of Command. So this is a great uh, action window that you get, because Gandalf readies in the refresh phase before he disappears. So you can actually use him then for word of command and we just search out our path of need right away luckily we drew into wealth of gondor which means we're going to get a resource on denethor and we can use errand rider to transfer another one over and finally get path of need down so that's step one of the combo step two is going to be getting burning brand on barivor with protector of lorian once you have that set up, Barivor can defend an unlimited number of attacks for as many defense as needed and ignore all the shadow effects. And the shadow effects are the worst thing. We just quest for one, just Denethor, uh, and we turn up, again, not exhausting because of Path of Need. Turn up a Labyrinth, so we tie the questing phase, Denethor defends the attack. There's no shadow effect, but doesn't have to actually have to exhaust. And then Barivor exhausts to draw two cards. Start the next round. These uh, labyrinths need um, some reminders here. They're going to gain a resource token every round. But we have a strategy for avoiding that which I just drew into, the, the Mariner's Compass. Okay, we also drew into the Protector of Lorien, so Barivor has a way to get uh, a little more defense, but now we really need the Burning Brand because we're at the mercy of a shadow effect. At any, at any point in time, it could come out and give an enemy plus nine attack. So the Burning Brand is extremely important right now. I'm going to exhaust Hanamarth to take a look at the next card and it's a torture chamber so we're going to pay one and we and play the mar the mariner's compass down because this is our tech against the locations in this quest mariner's compass you exhaust the character and the compass to 
search the top five cards in the encounter deck and swap a location from there with the location that's in the staging area. So these locations in the staging area that build up tokens, we get to swap them out for another one and the tokens just disappear. Okay, so I quest with Berivor and Denethor for three willpower. Torture Chamber comes in, and that's going to be a total of five, because the Dungeon Labyrinth gets plus one. Sword Threat goes up by two. And then the Errand Rider exhausts, and we are just going to swap out the, um, the Torture Chamber with just a, a really weak location. It's only got one threat, and uh, it's a nice card to get out of the encounter deck because it surges and has doomed one. So you get to avoid triggering those effects. Okay, Den again, Denethor survived the attack. Berivor draw drew a couple cards. And finally, we draw into Burning Brand. So everything is pretty much set now. Uh, it's turn five, so it, it took a while. Uh, we had to survive a lot of shadow effects, but it's a good thing we um, we killed that spider with Gandalf when we did, because we would have had to been dealing with two attacks every turn, and we likely would have come across a uh, just a game-ending shadow effect. Okay. Um... All right, so I'm just, uh, I think I was just checking to make sure that I had used Bear of War last turn, and I did. Um, sometimes I forget uh, to trigger those uh, those effects like Hennemarth and Bear of War before hitting the uh, control end to start the new turn. Um, so I just want to double check that I did that. Now I have to decide if I want to use Captain's Wisdom, I get to exhaust... I'd have to exhaust Denethor. Um, but I'm thinking willpower is a little more important than leadership resources at the moment. Because we have a lot of threat in the staging area. Okay. So... Uh, Hennemarth should really uh, go first. Um, should be the first action I play uh, to take a look at the next card before before playing any cards. Because um, now I see that um, we have one, two, we got three, four. Looks like it's going to be um, five. threat in the staging area uh, and we can only quest three with Berivor and Denethor so what we're going to do is actually uh, discard two to protect our Valorian to boost ourselves up to five and tie the reason we really didn't want to fail the quest there was because the, the jailer would shuffle away one of our objectives uh, into the encounter deck and we'd have to go looking for it that's if, uh, that's if you fail the quest so we really didn't want to do that. Now the Errand Rider exhausts and we get rid of the Dungeon Labyrinth, but we just replace it with another Dungeon Labyrinth, which isn't so terrible because now the, the resource counter is reset. All right, and here is where the deck shines. We have two enemies with only three attack against Berivor with two defense. Um, so one of the, sorry, one of the enemy had two attack, one had three attack. So Berivor will take one damage because she's only a two defense. I could have boosted my defense by discarding a card, um, but I decided just to take the one damage because both my cards in my hand were really good. Okay. Um, soon, once we can draw a little more cards, we won't really be starved for cards, and we'll be able to get our three defense every round and avoid taking any damage. Okay, Hanamarth peeks and sees a spider of Dol Guldur coming off the top. 
um, which is the only real problem with that is not the fact that we're going to have to deal with it in combat, because that's not a problem, but it's going to surge, and we don't really have any idea what uh, effect will come off the top. It could be a... Um, I don't know, it could be a really bad sh uh, treachery card. Okay, so I'm going to use Gandalf to draw three. And those three aren't particularly helpful right now. Um, I could get more willpower, though, if I were to exhaust the Errand Rider, transfer a resource over to Denethor, and then play... Uh, Calabrian Stone. But with Gandalf actually questing, I'm not sure if that's going to be needed or not. Because we're going to have bonus willpower this turn. Nope, but yeah, I'm going to decide on doing that. Uh, if I kind of forgot whether I did or not. So we do transfer resource using the Errand Rider to Denethor. Play the stone. And now we get between Gandalf and Berevor we have eight willpower. The spider comes down and it surges into Driven by Shadow. Driven by Shadow is going to add a threat to each location and enemy in the staging area, bringing the total to, let's see, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like nine. So we actually fail by one. So our threat goes up by one. But that's not the worst thing in the world. We now have three enemies to deal with, but we can easily get Berevor up to three defense by discarding our brand for Protector of Lorien. And Berevor defends all three, not exhausting due to Path of Need, and ignoring the shadow effects due to the Burning Brand. Now Berevor draws two. I had forgotten to exhaust Gandalf uh, because he went on the quest, so he should have been exhausted. All right, so that's the end of the round. I'm going to discard these shadow cards here and start the next turn. Each Dol Guldur uh, location gets a resource token on it. I think actually in the refresh phase, I'm going to play Heed the Dream and search out a... Oh, no, not there. I was kind of looking for a word of command because I could find the word of command and then use it with Gandalf before he leaves. But I didn't find one, so I guess I'll take an Aether Swordsman because I, I do need help um, with my willpower. I need to build some sustained questing strength. Okay, so I grabbed I grabbed Aether Swordsman and drew into a sneak attack, and that's going to be really helpful um, because I've got a Gandalf in hand. Okay, so you'll, you'll see I play my ally for the turn, Aether Swordsman. Um, I don't have a spirit icon yet. Um, I think I had just thought that I had um, I know I have a Song of Travel in hand um, so for the purposes of this playthrough just assume I had played it uh, and Berevor has one less resource I correct it I think on the next turn or the turn after um, but yeah it's it's a completely uh, legal play I just forgot to actually put the Song of Travel down on the table um, I had planned to do that uh, just forgot um, I'm not. I'm not saving the resources for anything, and in fact, um, I I should have played the Song of Travel. I think last turn, um, because I've got Test of Will in hand, and I could cancel a, a nasty shadow uh, treachery effect. Okay, um, so yeah, now we can sneak attack. Gandalf in, and this does not count as playing the ally, so we do not have to, we don't we don't have to worry about the fact that we got the Aether Swordsman and Gandalf in play in one turn. Uh, we're still abiding by the Nightmare rules because Sneak Attack allows you to put the ally into play rather than playing it. 
Um, so we put Gandalf in, and I'm going to use his ability to reduce my threat. And again, um, I just realized that I have so much willpower that I don't even need. So I'm debating whether or not I sh actually should play Gandalf. And I mean, I'm going to have 12 willpower, which is, which is a lot more than I need. So I'm going to just undo that. Uh... I didn't actually spend the resource from Denethor yet, so I'm just not going to give him, I'm not going to put any resources back onto him. Um, I did uh, reduce my threat by 5, so my threat should go up by 5, and because I never actually played Gandalf. Um, so I'll, I th I'll, I'll realize that in a second. Okay. Yeah, there we go. I'm actually at 38. So this this location comes down it's a doomed one and a surge okay so it surges into a torture master which is pretty bad i really could have used all that willpower it turns out because the torture master has five threat and now we're going to fail the quest and uh here's an <laughs> here's another effect i forgot and correct later so the torture master when he is revealed he places a resource token on each dual gold door location in play. So really, the, both the dungeon labyrinths should have one more token on them. Um, so that means I would have failed the quest by one more, which means my threat would should be one higher. And the active location should have one more token on as well. But after that, um, so I will fix that in a minute. Um, but I just used the Errand Rider and the Compass to get rid of that that uh, that Labyrinth. So now um, the effect does not stack uh, into future turns. All right, so I discard a Burning Brand to give Barovor an extra defense. Three defense is enough to defend all these enemies without taking damage. Then she exhausts, gets me two cards... Okay, then, so the new round um, begins. Okay. Get two more resources with Steward. So getting that out in the first turn has really paid off. Um, I've, been, I've been fine for resources this whole game, which is nice. And now I've got lots of cards, so I have lots of options here, including two sneak attacks with Gandalf so we can do a whole lot um, the question is uh, what's the best option right now um, should probably exhaust Hanamarth to, to take a peek at the top card but at the same time at some point I would like to go through a turn blind. Okay, so here we go. I'm I'm fixing this this thing. So, um, right. So the uh, the song of uh, travel comes down now. When it should have come down last turn. Not a big deal. I had the resource for it, and uh, it's a given that I would have had to play it for the Ether Swordsman. So there we go. Um, Everything's fine. Now, the reason I, I think I'm not using Hanamarth to peek is that I feel like I, I could go at least one turn blind without looking in the next card. And the reason that that's beneficial is that it's way better to use Hanamarth after the quest phase than before. Because there's a card in here called the Necromancer's Reach which deals the damage to each exhausted character. So if at some point I use Hennemarth to peek at the top card and it's Necromancer's Reach, then during the quest phase, it'll kill Hennemarth. Um, and then I'll be out of uh, scrying ability until I draw another Hennemarth. So if I can go through a quest phase blind, 
then I can start using Hennemarth after the quest phase for the next turn. Um, so, but, so Hennemarth will be ready for the quest phase and not die. So that's the thought process there. Um, all right. And I'm confident that there's going to be no treachery that can surprise me because I've got a test of will in hand. All right, so we got a Spider of Dol Guldur, which surges into a Torture Master. So that's uh, eight threat right there for a total of 12 in the staging area. And a note here, I forget again this Torture Master's effect to add a token to every Dol Guldur location in play. So really, the, the Labyrinth in the staging area should have had one more, which means our threat should be one higher again. So in total, our threat should be two higher, and there should be two more tokens on the active location. And I'll fix all this when I realize it in a minute. Okay, we're going to discard Shadow of the, Ca the Past to Protector of Lorien to get Barivor up to three defense, which is, again, enough for all these enemies. And we defend them all without exhausting and ignore all the shadows. Bear of War Exhaust draws two cards. Good, we have, we're have we going to have uh, uh, the ability to get out another Aether Swordsman, um, which is great. Going to really help our willpower. Okay. So Exhaust the Steward. Take a look at our top five with Heat the Dream and see what we can get. Uh, Treebeard. It's really nice to get Treebeard out earlier than this because um, he is going to build up resources throughout the game and be able to ready himself. He, okay, so here we go. Um, Hennemarth, I know I already uh, I accidentally did the started the next turn without actually using Hennemarth. Um, so Hennemarth exhausted at the end of the combat phase of last turn, saw that there is a Necromancer's Reach coming, and then during the refresh phase, readies. And so now, this quest phase, Henmarth is going to be fine. Henmarth is going to survive um, because we decided to um, just go a turn without scrying. Okay, we play uh, Treebeard as our one ally this turn. And we'll quest for five. So um, Berivor is four because of the, the stone, Calabrian stone, and Denethor is one. So that's five. Necromancer's Reach only damages Treebeard because he's the only one exhausted. For the combat phase, uh, it looks like we ran out of shadow effects, so um, only three of them are going to get any. Not that we care. I discard Hennemarth for Protector of Lorien, so Berivor can defend everything. And then here, in, at the end of the combat phase, um, Hennemarth peeks at the top. We see a Dol Guldur Beastmaster, which is a great card to see. It's not going to do anything fancy. We're going to be able to just deal with it in combat. And... All right. Okay. So we gain a couple resources. Um, all right. Well, we're going to play Quick Beam down this turn instead of the Aether Swordsman because um, we don't really need more willpower right now. We mainly just need the combat to get rid of some of these enemies. So we've been doing fine for questing. In fact, we've been holding um, holding back. We could have been uh, questing for, for even more with, um, with Protector of Lorien. Okay. So again, we swap out uh, a Labyrinth for another Labyrinth. And so the fact that I uh, had forgotten to put a token on that labyrinth um, when the um, Torture Master came out 
is kind of moot now. But I think it would have amounted to, uh, between all those effects, um, uh, about two threat, um, maybe three threat. If I hadn't, have th uh, I could have just discarded a card, though. Um, but I will fix that. Okay. So we discard the Song of Travel to boost Barabar's defense. Peek at the top card with Hennemarth. Oh, and it's a Surge card, so I don't like to see those. Hennemarth draws. And... We have... Um, some combat capability here. I actually should have done combat before drawing with Barivor. That was just a misplay. Because Barivor can contribute to attack to every single combat. Thanks to Path of Need, she doesn't have to exhaust. Excuse me. Okay. So here, uh, I'm realizing the mistake with the Torture Master and fixing my threat to uh, represent that. So between their effects, they would have um, added a token to the labyrinths when they came into play. And since I failed the quest phases on those turns, my threat would have gone up an additional point to the amount it already did. And of course, they each would have placed a token also on the active location. So there you go, I put two more on the active, raised my threat by two, so I'm at 44 now. So everything's fixed. Um, didn't really amount to, to much. And in fact, if I had actually remembered the effect when they came into play, uh, I may have even discarded a little more to protect of Lorien to avoid the threat raise, but... Um, who knows what I would have done, so I just I just took the extra threat that I that I should have taken. Okay, so now that that's all sorted out, we are trying to plan for this next phase. We know there's going to be um, a treachery coming down, the catacomb inspection, and that's going to surge. So we have no idea really what to expect. Um, it could be another five threat enemy. Um, it could be a treachery that makes you discard all your event cards. I'm not really sure. So I'm just going to sneak a, sneak in Gandalf to reduce our threat. I'm kind of... What, what, what I'm worried about right now is actually um, this treachery surging into a Hummerhorns because... The Hummerhorns would engage us and kill a hero. So this is, could potentially be a game-ending card if it comes up. So I'm trying to reduce my threat below 40 so that I would not have to engage the Hummerhorns if they were to come into play. I didn't ma quite manage to do that. Um, because... Yeah, we were at 45. Okay, so... Um, yeah, that all took place, I guess, in the refresh phase of the last round. Um, so we started the new round, got resources. Um, and... What I could do is, with Gandalf, um, could play Word of Command... Oh, I see what happened. Yeah, I, I had just forgotten to start the next turn. So this is, yeah, this is the planning phase. But uh, what I could do is I could search through the my deck with a word of command uh, and find another sneak attack if I have one and reduce my threat by, by five more. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I guess it's, it's not clear what I should do. 
Um, I'm just going to see whether or not I'm going to need it. Uh, and I don't. So it just surges into a, a king spider. And the king spider forces me to exhaust the character I have. And I just choose an Anflas Herdsman who's not really doing anything. Okay, let's try to get rid of that that dungeon uh, labyrinth that's in the staging area with our compass. And looks like we succeed. Now we're left with three very harmless non Dolguldur locations in the staging area. So this is the, the beauty of the compass. Um, it's not really, uh, it's a, it's a really good card, uh, to beat this quest. Okay. We discard our extra henna mirth to get Berivor up in defense and Berivor defends all, you know, the drill. Okay. We can retaliate now. I haven't been too concerned about actually killing anything in the past. Um, there was really no need to. Uh, Berivor is invincible. So. But now we actually want to thin down the herd of en enemies and actually look, for, uh, uh, look forward to the next stage uh, where we're eventually actually going to have to clear the act of vocation and lose Path of Need. So we're not going to have all this action advantage. Um, so we want to basically eliminate all the enemies before moving on. Okay, Berivor and Denethor have a combined attack of only three. Um, but they can attack everyone. So if an enemy has a defense of two, they can deal one damage to it. As in the case of those uh, torture masters on the left. Hanamarth peeks at the next card. It's another... Dol Guldur Beastmaster. And looks like that's going to be a good turn because he doesn't surge or do anything weird. Uh, we'll just have to kill him, but that's not going to be a problem with Treebeard. We'll play, play our one ally for the turn, another Herdsman. Now we're still above 40 threat, but... Um, so it ha has me a little concerned, uh, just in case we get a Hummerhorn somehow. Okay, so just calculating how much willpower we want, we want to send here. There's going to be, it looks like, so the, the locations in the staging area is just a Necromancer's Pass, which is three threat. And then two Endless Caverns, which are one threat each. So that's going to be five. And then the Dol Guldur Beastmaster is going to be another two threat. So there's going to be seven. And we actually decide to commit 13 just to put some progress on the active location. I like to keep that location in check so that when I decide to actually like push through with questing and go to the next stage, it doesn't take an insane amount of willpower to overcome. Because that labyrinth that's active right now, it's got 14 tokens on it, which means it takes a total of 18 progress to complete. And so we only have 15 on it, so we don't complete it, um, but we're also keeping it close to completion in case we want to uh, push through it and beat the, the quest in, in one go. Okay, so now we can attack back again dealing just one damage to each of the the torture masters uh and treebeard can help us kill something here um doesn't really matter which we'll just say he uh he joined in the attack on one of the torture masters okay so yeah Basically, Berivor and Denethor attacked one of them, dealt one damage, and then Treebeard joined in on the other attack and, and killed the other Torture Master. So, yeah, it's a little slow in terms of uh, killing enemies, but we'll get there. 
we use Henmarth, peek at the top card, and it's another harmless location. It's just a just a plain two threat uh, location. Probably the nicest card in this entire quest, to be honest. Doesn't really do anything bad. It just has, a, I think, a two threat, two quest points, and a travel effect where you have to exhaust a hero to travel there. So it can be pretty bad considering you're one hero down, but in comparison to the other cards, it's uh, <laughs> pretty nice. Okay. Um, so I think we're pretty much ready to start the next turn. So now we just keep going like this, um, slowly whittling down the, the mass of amount of enemies here. Eventually we're going to go on to the second stage. Okay. So we're already on turn, um, turn 13 here. So it's quite a long, a long quest. All right, so again, Exhausting Steward, getting two resources on Bearvor, deciding what we want to do this turn. Um, right now, we are just trying to stay alive, keep our threat low, outlast the encounter deck. We have Will of the West, and we can, once our, our, our deck is empty, we can reshuffle our discard pile back into our deck and keep going for quite a while uh, at this pace. Between three sneak attacks and three Gandalfs, we can lower our threat by 30 points um, in one cycle through the deck. So really there's no rush to be had here in, in this. Uh, once you're set up, you really wanna just take it slow. The danger, of course, is a, a card that say discards all the event cards in your hand um, if you aren't ready with a cancel that can that can make you lose your last copy of will of the west um, and stall out your game because you're going to thread out all right so again combat phase goes smoothly we retaliate with a bunch of attackers here um, so Barivor and denethor can contribute three attack to each enemy, and we've got some allies that can help out um, on some individual attacks. So we got Treebeard for four, uh, uh, a Swordsman for five, and then our heroes for three more for eight. And we actually get to kill one of the jailers, moving him to the victory display. Uh, then our heroes in quick beam can attack, deal three damage to a spider that's guarding the key, and then they attack again, um, killing off that uh, that jail, uh, the last torture master. Henmarth peaks at the top, and it's a just a forest spider, or a king spider rather, which is not a problem. Okay. Start the next turn. Treebeard gets a resource again. So he's slowly building up a pile with which he can use to ready himself. Uh, and ready quick beam as well if needed. We are looking to use up, before shuffling our discard pile back into our deck, we're looking at using up Gandalf. Uh, just to get the maximum amount of threat reduction possible. All right, we need to quest. So this is just uh, just math at this point because you know exactly how much is coming off the top, thanks to Henemarth. So we go. We try to keep the progress on the active even. King Spider comes down. We exhaust our. Um, just our errand rider, trying to keep anyone with actual attack strength 
uh, ready. Barabor, Barabor defends all. And let's see, we got Treebeard for four plus Barabor for two. That's six damage. Six attack, rather. That'll deal three damage to the spider, killing it. And we can ready him up. Um, him, Quick Beam, and Barabor can total nine damage and kill another spider. And lastly, with King Spider, well, we could ready Treebeard again. Um, but we don't need to. Okay. Uh, we don't actually need to. We can use our Swordsman. So Barivor puts the two Swordsmen. Will be four attack, which is enough to, to kill that spider. Oh, uh, looks like I missed that. So I didn't, I guess I didn't realize my swordsmen were still ready to go. So I guess I could have killed that spider, but no big deal. Um, oh, uh, looks like I also forgot to use Hanamarth before the, before the refresh phase. So I'm just going to go ahead and peek at the top card of the encounter deck, um, with Hanamarth. So, Hanamarth is pretty much an auto use at the end of at the end of every round. Uh, just sometimes I forget to do that in the confusion. But we really should know what the top card is. Um, yeah, so there we go. Remembering Hanamarth there. Uh, the top card is the Cavern Guardian. Okay. Yeah, I just exhausted and readied Hanamarth just to show that I did that at the end of the last round before the refresh phase. Because um, that's when you want to do it. Okay, so the Cavern Guardian comes down, does its little doomed effect. No big deal. Uh, we do the combat phase again. Barevor defends. We can discard um, Steward. Give herself three defense. Defend them all. All right, and we can retaliate now. Killing off with our three attack heroes. We can kill off the Spider and the Cavern Guardian. And we will enlist Treebeard and Quick Beam's help to kill the final Spider of Dual Guldur. Now, Hanamarth Exhaust peaks at the top card. It's the Necromancer's Reach, which is going to be fine. Um, actually good for a next turn quest push to complete this stage of the quest. So now the order in which you do the following, the following actions is really important. So you want to have all the enemies dead before advancing. Um, because you're going to clear the active location and you're going to lose Path of Need. And without Path of Need, Barevor does not have unlimited defense. So you can't just leave all the enemies there in, in front of you. you got to kill them all. She can, at maximum, just defend one attack. Um, so you want to kill them all and then either see zero or one enemies coming off the top for the next turn. Then we're going to do a massive quest push with all our Outlands allies. We're going to clear the active and clear the whole first stage of the quest. And ideally, but not necessarily, you want to do this before ever reshuffling, before ever playing a copy of your Will of the West. Okay? So I actually decided to play Gandalf because I know we're about to play Will of the West and I want Gandalf in my discard. I want to use him. Okay, as well as will of the, as well as test of will, we're gonna get all these back when we play Will of the West, so might as well just play them all now. Okay, so we had more than enough willpower to advance. Now we don't actually advance until we until we control an objective. So I'm going to raise my threat by two, take control of Gandalf's map which makes the attached character not able to attack or defend, which is fine. 
Uh, Denethor doesn't really need to do that stuff. Now um, we do advance and we actually have the opportunity to travel somewhere for the first time in a long time. So we'll travel to um, just that harmless location in the Great Forest Web. We have to exhaust a hero to travel there. So we exhaust Denethor. Hanamarth peeking at the top cards. He's a Dol Guldur Beastmaster coming down. And now we play our Will of the West here. So this is where the order is important. We play the Will of the West with Gandalf out. Our discard pile gets shuffled back in. Then we play Word of Command to search our freshly shuffled deck, which now has Path of Need in it. Uh, and just grab Path of Need. And so now we have Path of Need ready to play right over again. So that that the ordering there is important. You clear the you clear the active, get path of need in your discard pile, then play Will of the West, get path of need in your deck, and then play Word of Command, pulling it right back out. An alternative alternative is if you have a Heed the Dream in your hand and enough resources to uh to use it to its full effect, you can do the same thing. You can search your entire n newly shuffled deck for your path of need and grab it. Okay, so we're now in the second stage, and we have the chance to free our captive hero uh, once we place progress on the quest. However, that does mean that the Nazgul of Dol Guldur will come out, and we want to be ready for it. So we now attach Path of Need to a location in the staging area. And now we're going to quest through. We're going to quest a lot here with all our outlands again um, so now w our goal essentially is to place enough progress to complete the active so that we could travel to and sorry complete the active and place progress on the quest freeing our prisoner so that we can then travel to the new location that happens to have path of need on it and that way Berevor will be able to defend the Nazgul, and any other enemies that we happen to have. We um, could have, for example, had an enemy engage us last round, and we'd want to be able to defend multiple attacks. Okay, so we play Gandalf down, reduce our uh, threat by five. And if the math works out, um, we can we can quest for, well, 21 using our Outlands allies. We can't really quest with Berevor, unfortunately. Because um, Berevor needs to exhaust uh, to, to quest. So I think I mistakenly have, am including Berevor's willpower here. Um, what, what I, sh uh, in reality, um, Berevor cannot be questing here because Berevor did not exhaust. Uh, so, um, really Gandalf should, should just be questing. So just assume Gandalf's questing, contributing the same amount of willpower, just four willpower. And that'll be enough to... Um, complete the active location and get us 16 progress on the quest. Again, we don't advance. Uh, we can't advance stage two until we control all of the th all three of the objectives. So we're going to have to wait a little while until we claim those other ones. And now since our threat's actually down at 34, we don't engage both enemies. We only engage one of them. Um, so we electively decide to take the Nazgul because, well, it's um, going to need to be killed before the end of the game. So we discard Elven Light to Berevor, draw it back into our hand, discard it again to Berevor. That'll give us a defense bonus of two, which is four defense, and the Nazgul has four attack. So we can safely defend that, ignore its shadow effect, and um, 
we actually, as I said, Gandalf actually quested, not Berivor. So uh, we have enough attack with Treebeard, Quick Beam, that's seven with Glorfindel, eight, nine, ten, and then um, Berivor, eleven, twelve. That's enough to kill it. So we don't actually need Gandalf to kill the Nazgul. Um, so everything uh, works out mathematically. Berivor peaks at the top card. Um, and it's going to just be a driven by shadow, which is going to be fine. It's going to add a little extra threat. Not a big deal for our massive army here. We play down a third protector of Lorien. At this point, I really know that I'm going to win. Uh, so I'm trying to figure out how to reduce my threat as much as possible because threat does contribute to your score. One way to reduce threat is with sneaking in Gandalf as much as possible. So I'm trying to draw into my, my third sneak attack. So we can sneak him in in the resource phase, and then the planning phase, and then the quest phase, which is the phase we're going to win in. Um, so we're going to see here. Okay, we found uh, a path in need. So we're going to play that. Uh, unfortunately, all five cards uh, are useless to us. So we'll just grab a Wealth of Gondor to help us pay for all those sneak attacks. Um, but we will pay three leadership resources um, for the full effect of Path of Need. Sorry, Heed the Dream. And search out our Gandalf card. Then play Wealth of Gondor, give Denethor resource, and play Sneak Attack, sneaking Gandalf in. Now in the in the uh, planning phase, we sneak in. Sorry, no, this is still the uh, yeah still the resource phase. Um, but before it ends, I'm just going to play Word of Command. So before he comes back, I'm going to play Word of Command, pull him back, and search out my third and final sneak. Uh, then I will play Captain's Wisdom again, still resource phase. Okay, now it's the planning phase. We sneak in Gandalf a second time, reduce our threat by five. Okay, and then we'll play Protect Lorian. Not much else to do in the planning phase, so we'll go into the quest phase, sneak in Gandalf a third and final time, reduce our threat by five more, all the way down to 20. And just quest everyone. So again, you'll notice I'm still on the second stage, but that's no problem. Um, we are going to claim the objectives after committing characters to quest. So there's an action window here uh, where I can take those objectives. And as soon as those objectives are claimed, since we have the, the necessary progress on the active, uh, sorry, on the main quest, it'll advance immediately. So we raise our threat by two and take the, uh, the keys, raise our threat by two, and take the torch. Boom, now we have all three objectives, and the next stage comes into play. If you've played this before, you'll know this is the stage where the... Uh, the little orc guards come into play off the top of your deck. But they only come into play at the beginning of the quest phase, which is already passed. So we don't have to do that. We just go into the quest phase. Just for fun, I'll cancel that uh, treachery, the Driven by Shadow. So we really only have three, four, five, six threat in the staging area versus our 34 willpower. So we completely blow away the quest uh, for the win. So we have complete the active and put put well over the necessary number of progress points on to the main quest. So there you have it. That's how the deck should work. Um, the, the encounter deck was kind of nice to us. I mean, you have no idea how many, how many losses I had in, in getting this, uh, 
getting this playthrough finally finished um, without without any real mistakes. Um, so, yeah, I count myself lucky for sure. Uh, if you if you include the um, if you include the choice of Glorfindel as a captive, as a sixty six percent loss rate, then I'd say probably had over 200 attempts <laughs> um, but only only a third of that in actual attempts um, before getting a successful <laughs> successful playthrough but I think that that this playthrough did a good um, did a good job of showing what the deck is supposed to do and how it's supposed to work the main difficulty here uh, is everything, um, and so we we include cards to pretty much counter all the all the things that the encounter deck throws at us. We've got Burning Brand to stop the shadows. We got unlimited readying using Path of Need to cancel all the shadows, and we've got lots of willpower with Outlands characters. Um, but I'd have to say one of the most valuable players cards here uh, is the compass. The compass allowed us to get rid of those Dol Guldur locations that kept popping up. So normally that, that strategy of keeping Path of Need active would never have worked because the dungeon labyrinths would have been sitting there in the staging area for a dozen turns building up threat and then the the torture chambers would have reached for progress and ended our game so definitely definitely the compass uh, saved saved us um, but yeah that's pretty much it uh, it's nice to finally be done with one of the hardest solo quests in the game I'd be really interested in hearing alternatives, different strategies that people use to beat this quest. Um, yeah. Well, that's that's about it. Uh, so, hope you enjoyed it. And let me know what you thought. Happy questing.